brothers and my sisters Only they can understand we'll fight this war together Together we will stand Hey everybody, it's Joe and thanks for tuning in to TVO Campfire. What this show's about is about successful veterans and they're bringing you the stories and their experiences. And we hope that it can provide inspiration to each of you out there, or maybe a veteran that you know to help in their life. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of TVO Campfire. Today, we've got Ray Amador with us. When I found Ray, I was like, this guy, we've got to have him on board with us. He's down in the Houston area ever since he came off of active duty. He's been a very great um, advocate for veterans. He's done some major things. Um, the only downfall to him that I found out was, you know, as I got to know him more and more with his involvement with our organization, was that he was Army. I mean, you know, and, and, and it was like, it's like, oh man, another Army guy. Uh, he's He has done some phenomenal things. Uh, in his life for vets. And that's why he's on the show today. And this is probably going to be the first one that we've had who's come on the show out of his success of being an advocate for veterans. So Ray, welcome to the show, man. Glad to have you today, bud. It's a pleasure being here, man. I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, where are you born? What did you do as a kid that kind of groomed you into who you are today? Okay. Well, I was born in a little town called Quero, Texas, in Duet County, and I grew up in Victoria, Texas. Basically, I moved from Quero in diapers to Victoria and uh, ended up uh, growing up there. I'm the oldest of eight kids, two boys and one girl. I mean, two boys and, and six sisters. Uh, we had six kids in a row. And like my father says, uh, after six kids, he bought a TV. Uh, TV broke down and he had two more girls. <laughs> I joined the uh, military in 1980, uh, right out of high school. Uh, I was, like I said, I was the oldest. We lived in a 900 square foot house and I didn't have a lot of money, but I always had food on the table. And I knew my parents could afford education. So I decided to take the military route and uh, actually, while in high school, I was in Golden Crescent for the Alliance of Minorities in Engineering. So in summer, I went to DuPont, Alcoa, and learned, you know, some engineering uh, trades. So I had a pretty good resume for college, but just, you know, didn't have the money. So went to the military and ended up falling in love with the military. So school became secondary to the military, ended up... Uh, spent 17 and a half years in the army. And uh, of course I had the air force with my taxi cause I was a paratrooper for 14 years. So I appreciate you Joe. <laughs> so, but uh, ended up uh, getting out in 1997. And I actually got out because a friend of mine had uh, seen some surveyors working in the offshore industry. And I was a reconnaissance surveyor in the army, uh, basically comparable to what a pathfinder would do for the infantry. I did it for the artillery. And uh, he told me about it, so I did some research and come to find out there was these surveyors that are getting paid every hour of the day, 24 hours a day. So I decided, you know what, let me look into it. Uh, put together a resume, put it out there. I had 36 uh, callbacks on my resume. Long story short, I interviewed with a company called Fugro Champs, offshore survey company, and started working with them. They hired, I was the first veteran that they hired. And, you know, because of my friend giving me the connection, Fugro Champs hired me as their first veteran. It, you know, gave me the drive to, you know, if, if people are willing to help me, then I need to reciprocate. 
So I started reaching out to veterans, help them with military veteran programs, reaching out to veterans and bringing in more veterans into the company. And it was very successful. It stuck with me. And at this point, uh, I've been in oil and gas for a little over 20 years. Uh, I'm actually active in four different nonprofits. I'm on the board of directors for a nonprofit that provides legal services called the Living Legacy Center. Uh, I'm on a, another one called uh, Love and Hope Ranch. They're going to start a PTSD and work with Camp Hope uh, just north of Austin. And I'm on their board of directors for public relations. Uh, I just got to join Texas Veterans Outdoors, community outreach leader for the Eastern region. I'm working with Thomas Booth, the Eastern director. And I'm also with the uh, Combined Arms, which is a uh, in Harris County. It's a nonprofit that has a software where the veterans can go into the software and it lets people know uh, who to connect and it starts making electronic connection and getting people help. And uh, I'm their community leader in Montgomery County. So I've been very actively involved helping veterans. Um, me and my uh, two sons, Tristan and Gareth, uh, we collect wheelchairs and hospital beds and fix them and repair them and donate them to uh, veterans. Um, and through all of this, my employers know I do that. And uh, an employer of mine from a few years back uh, actually nominated me for the uh, 25 Impactful Veterans in Energy in 2019. And that was through Heart Magazine. And I actually got uh, selected and awarded that. The flag that uh, is in back of me is the, what I got as a gift from them and uh, just continue to help veterans. I mean, uh, we had a moment where we had one veteran needed some help with a wheelchair and some work. And in five hours, we got him a wheelchair and we got his uh, front door taken care of and uh, getting him money after 50 years of not getting any help. Yeah. It's, so, it's, and, and for the people that don't, uh, and, and actually I'll, I'll pull this out right here. For those of you who aren't involved with Texas Veterans Outdoors and you're seeing this show for the very first time, maybe, Ray, for us as a community leader down in Houston, this guy is actually very, very big into the outdoors. Not only does he go and, and make hunts happen for our vets down there in the Houston area, but he, with him, it's much more than him you've probably just heard a good four or five minutes about a quick crash history on him. He went out to San Angelo and he went out to the skeleton ranch that's out there, him and his wife uh, and, and his uh, children as well. And they went out there and they started rehabbing this home that's been on that property for gosh, man, at least three to four decades and they started to rehab this home so that when we take vets out there to go hunt and go camp and go hiking they are going to have a place to stay and it's him and his family who started that up and to me that that's just amazing so what you're hearing from ray is so much more behind the scenes there's so much more that goes on with it and he's such a an impact in the community you know obviously his family's following what he's doing but he's got vets that are following him on what he's doing as well and ray one thing i i, I definitely want to bring you up and, and to hear from you too is in in your own mind when do you think that you're like you know what i've made it in life i I'm a success. Um, that was in the military, actually. Uh, there was a point in time in the military where um, things just fell into place for me. And, you know, I, I was really blessed in the military. Um, I had some very good positions. Um, I was chief server for the uh, Rapid Deployment Force of the United States. Uh, I was a first surveyor to have that position. 
and it was a, a multi-military uh, attack force, if you will, 18 hour no notice deployed, be wherever you need to be. And I was responsible to make sure that the accuracy on the battlefield for the artillery and all the indirect fire elements was there. And at that point, I had passed up some of my superiors and I did a lot of suit and tie events. Um, I got uh, in my advanced non-commissioned officer training, uh, I was uh, given a position master warfighter, which is uh, academics and peer selection. So I'm a master warfighter from the US Army. And it just, it dawned on me that everything that my mentors had taught me had culminated to that moment when I became a chief surveyor and had my first actual deployment activity where I had to handle the survey component for the task force. And it wasn't about me, it was about Staff Sergeant Dwight Anthony Deck, you know, my first mentor that taught me, you know, you don't have to be vulgar. You don't have to scream, be passive, but strong, you know? And, and when he gave that to me, I realized that I was successful because I was able to teach, coach and mentor and carry forward what I was taught, coached and mentored. And, and to me, that was my success. I took guys in the battlefield, everybody came back in one piece, all, all six of us, you know? I, and, and for that, I, I'm very thankful for. And that gave me the drive to go into the civilian life and understanding, you know what? Humility is going to be my success. Because in the military, we learn humility. We accept what we have to do and we do it, you know? And the arrogance and some of the things you see in the military, I mean, military, is, it's a large corporation and you have all personalities. But every now and then you have someone that gives you life through mentorship. And I carried that into the civilian sector. So in my first job, I went in as a, as a field surveyor and in nine months I became a field project manager. You know, it, it just, things fell into place. And, and at that point, because of Dwight Anthony Deck and I love that man to death, we still communicate. And uh, I wanna make him proud. I wanna make the falling service members proud. You know, I don't want to be the crutch. I want to be someone that helps you take the crutch off and help you walk. And I think, Raymond, that you're doing that. You're doing so much. And the passion that you have is coming from the heart. So let me ask you a question. If you were to receive a donation of $10,000 right now, what would you be doing with it? I would probably start looking. I mean, I've got a, a list of people on my emails that need help right now. I would disperse it into nonprofits and focus on help. You know, I, I know more than just the, the four nonprofits are the ones that I'm actively involved in. But I, I touch and feel a lot of nonprofits. You know, there's a, a future operations base, Rodney Lopez here in Houston. He helps guys with blue collar skills. He teaches them carpentry, electrical work, things of that nature. And I know he needs money. And I've got people that he's already bidding on jobs to try to get funding to help them. Uh, I've got a Vietnam veteran. He's, he was Army, she's in the Navy. Uh, they live in a house, maybe 1,200 square foot. They got concrete because in the flood, they weren't able to repair. We got their walls taken care of. Uh, I've got Mr. Thomas with his wheelchair. He's, we got to transfer his bathroom because he can't step over into the tub to take a shower. So, I mean, I would look at every nonprofit that I have available and I'd, I'd pass it and, uh, you know, pass it forward and help the ones that I know that I can help and have others help the ones that they can help. I think this is great. One of the biggest challenges that veterans have 
whether it's right when they first transition out or over a period of time, there's things that we have had experienced that we end up, it's in us. And mm -hmm. so everything that we are today is a culmination, right, of all mm -hmm. of the things from our past experiences. And over time, things change for us. As life goes on, our body may be less equipped to handle certain injuries that we've had in the past or other things. But the biggest challenge has been the resources that are not available and not knowing where to go. And I think what is fantastic about all of the things that you're doing is that you have networked and you have the resources available to help others. No, I, I agree. Um, one of the things that I try to tell people that are in the service is you have to network. My success has been my network. I have an international network. You know, when things are slow and I may not have work, my network reaches out to me. You know, when veterans need help, my network reaches out to me and I use my network. It is my biggest toolbox I have. And I tell any service member, get on Facebook, look for veterans in your hometown community if that's where you can go home. Go to LinkedIn, connect with people that have your same desires for education. If you wanna be an engineer, get on LinkedIn, find local engineers. There's engineers that are veterans that you can reach out to, just connect to them, just see what they're doing. And, you know, introduce yourself, let them know who you are. You know, as a matter of fact, I, I'm working with a company in Fort Worth, uh, putting together the Department of Defense Skill Bridge program for them. And I'm parallel that with Department of Labor Apprenticeship Program. And I've got two veterans right now that are standing by and once that program is in place, they're going to get interviewed and they will be able to get out and be on temporary duty assignment with the civilian company for six months to OJT. Let me just kind of stop right there for a second, because I think with all of the networking that you have, the connections that you have and the information that you're sharing, including veterans getting up and making the initiative to connect with other veterans or organizations that are in their field. Here's the biggest challenge that I think if you can address this and help someone feel confident enough to do this may make a huge difference. And that is many times we don't want to ask someone or make it appear that we're asking for help because veterans feel that they should be able to handle everything all on their own. We can do this, I can do this. But if you could share with them how to feel comfortable making that connection or reaching out on Facebook as a friend or initiating a conversation so that it doesn't appear like they're looking for a handout, I think that that would be really, really well, helpful. Absolutely, uh, you know, I. I tell these guys that one of the things that we as service members really don't like is people that micromanage, correct? Especially, you know, a senior non-commissioned officer, a commission officer micromanages. And the reason we don't like it is because effective leadership is you look at your team, you find their strengths, and then you create the team to complement each other's strengths, correct? We do that in the military all the time, you know? And you know what that is? That's us working together as a team. No one carries all the weight. So we as veterans need to understand we're not gonna carry all the weight for ourselves. We need help. We need somebody to our left and to our right. So when you transition, you have to use the same mentality. There's the army is not a single individual. It's a group, it's a multitude of teams, squads, platoons, companies, battalions. They need to understand, practice what you've been taught. Look for someone to help you to your left and to your right, to cover your six. If you're willing to do exactly what you're taught, 
then you're not going to micromanage yourself into self-pity or being unsuccessful. That, that nails it. If you're willing to do what you're taught, absolutely. I, I'd, I'd be willing to bet probably my annual salary on that one quote right there. I'm willing to bet if you came out and you did what you were taught while you were in, I do not see us having the problems that we have in the veteran community right now. I really think that the people who, who do struggle, who do fall victim to whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whatever the case is, I really think it has a lot to do with because when they get out, they do not do what they were taught. And that's why I say I'd be willing to bet an annual salary on that right yeah. there. Well, they, they, I don't see anybody getting out and doing what they were taught while they were in, sticking to those core values and running with it and not being successful in life. I don't see it. And I think that's where we fail as a society amongst our veteran community right there. We don't tell people, we don't tell our veterans the truth. We always, you know, the crutch, it, it's so easy to grab a crutch than to actually stand up and walk. You know, it, it, if you broke your leg, it takes time, you know, but it will heal. You just need to understand what you need to do. You know, there, there's guys in the military that have pushed themselves above and beyond. But as soon as they take off the uniform, they take off the mentality. And, and that has to stop. And it stops by us doing what we're doing right here. You know? And, and that's, I'll, I'll say, that's what I like about Ray being a part of Texas Veterans Outdoors is because he helps people that want it maintain that mentality. Ray is one of those types of guys that you can actually gather around and it's not that he's coaching you. It's not that he's trying to be your leader. He's straight up telling you, if if you want to be successful, this is how you do it, man. This, this is no joke how you do it. And I've got a network to help you with that. Ray, Ray is one of the phenomenal members of the mentorship program that we have that's yeah. out there. He is straight up one guy that you, you, you want to get serious and you want to walk that yellow brick road that we're providing for you. He's one of the guys that's going to be there on your side the whole time telling you, hey, you're about to step off that yellow brick road that these folks have laid out for you. Yeah. You know, that's up to you to get back on it. Let so, me throw in, too, that one of the things we sort of don't think about is the strength of our mind. And every person that has been through boot camp or basic training has proven to themselves that they have a strong mind mm -hmm. and that it is mind over matter. And we need to take that same principle that we learned then and apply it in our everyday lives now and know that our mind, our mental attitude, our mental focus, everything that's going on upstairs extends to our tangible outward world mm -hmm. and so if we're not utilizing all of the things in our mind that can help us to move in a direction that will bring success to us or make things better or more palatable depending on the situation we're in so if there's certain injuries that are keeping us from doing certain things it's still really important to do the things that we can and keep our mental focus on that. You've already been equipped to do that and you've proven to yourself that you successfully can. Yeah. And I think that is what Raymond is saying. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, you know, let, let's talk about the battlefield. There's, you know, maybe, you know, your buddy died next to you, you know? And, and maybe like all of us, and, and this is me talking about me. You know, I always feel like I could have done something better or it's my fault or 
it should have been me because that kid was a young private with a 18 year old wife and a baby. You know, we all think that. And sometimes we carry that burden with us. And instead of honoring the falling, we waller in self-pity. And, and I tell all veterans, if you wear that uniform and you're proud to wear that uniform and you wanna carry yourself into the civilian sector, that uniform never comes off. Just because you retire or you know, discharge all of our military, you are still and always will be a service member. You'll always be a veteran. So honor the falling by being an example for others to follow. I, it's important that they do that, but you know, and I told them, guys, look, if you got skeletons in the closet, that's understandable, we all do. But go back to what we were taught and look for someone to help. I'll help you hold the damn closet door closed to keep those skeletons in the closet for you. And if you let me do that, I, I, I'm the type of guy. I'll, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I'll turn around and show them where the the gas and the matches are, so they can burn down that whole closet and all of them skeletons with them. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I'm I'm not about like, hey, let's close the door and keep them hidden. I'm like, let's burn them some to the ground and let's get rid. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. And cool. let you get that monkey off your back type thing. But yeah. but no, you do, Ray. Um, you you do. You do. You got a lot of trend. You got a lot of great stuff that if people would just listen to what you're saying and act on what on what you're talking about, it will change their life tremendously. Um, it, it's t tell. I, I know some of the stuff you got coming down the pipeline, but I want to talk about uh, obviously the people that that aren't a privilege to the conversations and that the staff has amongst our organization. Tell them what you've got coming up for vets in the near future. Okay. Um, for right now, I've got a social event in the Woodlands, Texas at Grimaldi's. It's a restaurant in Woodlands, Texas. It's uh, March 25th from 7 to 9 p.m. It's uh, family oriented. Uh, I always tell people uh, veteran families are priority one. So we'll have the veterans will have their spouses and children. I've got an uh, Air Force veteran that is probably, I think he's about 80 years old. Uh, he lives in my neighborhood and I'm gonna invite him to come and just talk about what he has done in his life and, and honor him, honor our past. Um, I also uh, will be uh, meeting with Love and Hope Ranch um, next week, Wednesday to organize a hog eradication uh, opportunity for Texas Veterans Outdoors to help them get rid of some hogs in the area as they get ready to build the Love and Hope Ranch. Uh, it's just north of Austin, so I'll be doing that later on. Um, I also had, like I said, I'll go ahead and mention again, um, Trans Global Services, which is a survey company specializing in oil and gas and uh, infrastructure we'll have their Department of Defense Skill Bridge program completed probably within the next 30 days. I've already got them registered as a Department of Labor apprenticeship for surveyors for land surveying. So I'll be looking for veterans that are interested in joining the Skill Bridge program for that company. Uh, I'll be doing the initial interview and uh, if they fit, then I will go ahead and uh, let them know that I need to uh, hopefully get them moving forward. So uh, that's what I have on, on right now. Um, other than that, just continue to help veterans. I want to reiterate that it's important that guys and girls, all service members in the military, start reaching out to your hometowns, get on Facebook. If you want, if you love to be, uh, if you like basket weaving, then I suggest find someone in your hometown does basket weaving, you know, I, I, and, and go to school while you can. Take your classes, take your core education. And if you're a grunt or a medic or a dentist, whatever it is in the military, and that may not be your calling, then 
think about what you like to do and transition into that in some type of education. And remember this, the last thing I wanna say is, it's important that you understand that you going to school, what that does, it just gives you the foundation and validates that you have the ability to learn the job. Job education starts with your first job in the civilian world. So keep that in mind. Um, is there any other questions of me? I, I know we don't have a lot of time, but it's okay to have skeletons closet. It's okay. We're here to help you look at your left and right flank and find a buddy, no matter where it is. Uh, as he's mentioned, he's got the restaurant night that's going on down there. That's going to be a great time to meet and greet people to come on out. Um, all of that stuff is, is on Texas Veterans Outdoors. It's right on our public page. If you're inside the, mem the private members group, you'll get all the details you want of that event. He's got the hog hunts coming up down there that he's doing for vets uh, as well. And that's just the stuff that he's doing within the organization. That's not the 9,000 other things that he's doing outside the organization uh, and working with other nonprofits, man. Ray's one of our great guys who helps do a lot of collaboration stuff with us, with other organizations. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Ray, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your family being supportive of you and involved with Texans Veterans Outdoors as well. Um, you, you, sir, are one of the key figures when we say part of our mission is taking those veterans and making them key figures in their local community. That's exactly what you're doing. And not only are you doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for other veterans as well. And, and I appreciate that tremendously. Rebecca, take us home, please. I just want to thank you so much for having the passion and embracing the needs of the veterans and taking that head on and getting so involved. I know that a lot of people are thinking, how can someone be consumed with so many different things? But time management is obviously something that you are also really equipped to do because you're really making such a difference in so many lives and really connecting all the dots where they need to be connected. And I wanna thank you so much for sharing that with us today. It's, it's been an honor and a pleasure. God bless our veterans and God bless America. What an impactful show we've had today. I wanna to thank you all so much for taking some time out of your day to watch and learn and get connected with us and the guests that are on the show. Raymond is just incredible. Please make sure to follow him and get connected with him on all the social media. And even if you're in his area, the community events that he's got going with Texas Veterans Outdoors. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Please make sure to share this with all your friends, family, your loved ones, veterans, get this out there so that we can make a difference and you'll be helping us do that. Thanks for tuning in. Well, we're veterans, so we spend a lot of time in mental health. Um, <laughs> Thanks for telling me. That's part of it, right? And uh, so, and we also teach a class called, uh, now it's called Rec for Heroes. It's a guitar class at the VA, uh, Fort Worth VA. And I've been teaching now for now five years, and, and Ron has been helping me teach the disabled vets up there. And um, so I said, I got to thinking, you know what? A song is essentially three minutes with your therapist, right? I mean, it can make you up, make you down, whatever. So I uh, wrote a little bit about it, and Ron is like, yeah, let's finish that song. Yeah, we sit down and it's called finish, three minutes. Of, and we finished it in a thunderstorm. Yeah, that's so. right. Give me a three minute session with my favorite Haggard song. Warm summer evening and the rumble of a storm. Find my direction, way to heal my wrongs. With a three minute session in the form of a country song. They tried their best and hour to work on you. Ask your questions.
a three minute session with my favorite Leland song. Warm summer evening and the rumble of a storm. Find my direction, way to do my wrongs. With a three minute session in the form of a country song. With my favorite Patsy song Warm summer evening And the rumble of a storm Find my direction Way to heal my wrongs With a three minute session In the form of a country song Give me a three minute session with my favorite bowling song A warm summer evening And the rumble of a storm Find my direction Way to heal my wrongs With a three-man obsession In the form of a country song Find my direction Way to heal my wrongs with a three-minute session in the form of a country song.